Hello, welcome to this mini gem brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is James Fisher and this mini gem is called My Patient with Parkinson's Disease Can Swallow the Meds. Gulp. So by the end of this mini gem, hopefully you'll understand some of the risks that are associated with missing medications and hopefully you'll also be able to manage the medications of, of someone who's not able to take their usual pills. So I think one of the key things to say about Parkinson's medications, first of all, is that they can be really confusing, really confusing. Be it the names, the doses, the frequencies, the timing, it can be really tricky when you're faced with a, a new patient with a long list of medications at four in the morning. With this in mind, a key message is to get help. Often the patients are extremely knowledgeable about their reg regimes. Similarly, family members often know what pills and when and know, know it inside out. I think during working hours, the pharmacy team are a really valuable resource that you can draw upon. And I'd also say that during hours, the Parkinson's team, most notably the nurse specialist, are an absolutely invaluable resource. So as you'll know, when patients with Parkinson's are admitted acutely to hospital, it's not uncommon for people to raise concerns about the swallowing. And often, patients will be made nil by mouth. This makes the job of the junior doctor who has to prescribe the medications even more complex. And this situation is inherently dangerous. If people miss them Parkinson's medications, they run very low on dopamine. And their motor symptoms and also their non-motor symptoms are liable to get worse. It's certainly likely that when the speech and language therapist comes to assess their swallow, if they've not any medications, the swallow is likely to be much worse than it was in the first place. But this is one thing that we all really worry about, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Here's some of the clinical features just to refresh your memory. The reason we worry about this particularly is its high mortality. So people with Parkinson's must get their medications. So how do we manage this then? Well, firstly, we have to find a new administration route, a new way of getting the medications into our patients. And there's two we're going to discuss in this mini gem. The first is a nasogastric tube. Once a nasogastric tube is in place, we can deliver Madapar. Madapar is also known as Cobenaldopa. And Madapar, or Cobenaldopa, is a form of levodopa, like Cinemet, which most people are familiar with. The difference with Madapar is that it comes in a dispersible form, that can be dissolved in water and given down an NG tube. A second alternative administration route would be via transdermal delivery of a drug. And the medication that is available in this form is reticotine. Reticotine is a dopamine agonist, so a, a different class of drugs to Madapar. I think it's really important that you're aware of some of the potential problems with reticotine, though, because although it's attractive on the face of it, you know, just a patch that you pop on, there are problems you can face with it. Dopamine agonists like reticotine are more likely to cause hallucinations and confusion and may even precipitate a frank delirium in someone who's never taken them before. We therefore have to be really careful about doses of reticotine that we choose to use. And a good mantra for this problem, as for geriatric medicine in general to be honest, is start low and go slow. Just to very briefly mention, you may come across patients who have subcutaneous apomorphine delivery devices or patients who have a percutaneous jejunostomy that delivers a gel form of levodopa, so-called duodopa. Both these setups are pretty specialised treatments and they don't really have a role for the acute management of this problem out of hours. If you do come across patients using them though, continue their usual regime and I'd urge you to contact the Parkinson's disease specialist nurses in the morning to get some more advice. Okay, so we've decided on about our administration route. The second thing is to work out what dose we need to use. And I'd like to orientate you to a tool here that you might find useful, pdmedcalc.co.uk. I'll work you through it and hopefully you'll, you'll see how easy it is. So if you click through this link, you'll find yourself on the home page. On the home page, this gives you a summary of firstly who the tool's for, what the purpose of the tool is, and also a bit of background about where the tool came from. Once you've read this and you're happy with this, if you click the bottom, it'll take you through to the calculator itself. Okay, so on the second page of the tool, you've got the calculator itself, and you'll see there's a drop down list of medications. Let's work for an example. Let's say our patient takes Cinemet, Cocarol Dopa, 125 milligrams four times a day. So we select the drug from the drop-down list, we select the frequency from the drop-down list, and then we click Add. 
If you have any more medications, you can follow the same principle to add these, but let's just say that that's all our patient takes. Once you're happy with this, you click Calculate. So on the final page at the top, you'll see that the tool reminds you of what you've entered, just so you can double check that you've not got the medications wrong. Below that, it'll tell you the equivalent levodopa dose for this patient based on those medications. As you work your way down, it gives you two choices. Option number one is converting all the usual medications to the equivalent dose of Madapar dispersible. As you can see, this is then split into four divided doses, and these can be given down an NG tube. The second option is converting all the usual medications to the, a dose of reticotine patch. So this is again for patients in whom an NG tube is not really appropriate. As you can see, the dose comes out as 4 milligrams here, but as you'll see below, there's a reminder about you, the fact that you need to be cautious with reticotine patch. Below this, there's a couple of top tips. Uh, at the bottom of the tool, there's a couple of links where you can give us some feedback. You can go back to the start, or you can access the references that underpin the tool. If you pick up any problems or have any queries, then don't be afraid to drop us a line via that email at the bottom. So having watched this, hopefully you've got a feel for some of the risks associated with missing Parkinson's medications, and you'll also have a feel for what you can do next time you're in this situation. If you've got a spare couple of men's and you'd like to learn a bit more, then there's a few things that I'd urge you to check out. The first is a very readable journal article that goes through the acute management of Parkinson's. The second resource is Parkinson UK's website. Their Get It On Time campaign has got some really great stuff. Stuff you can order for the ward to try and make your ward a bit more Parkinson's disease friendly. And I'd urge you to check it out. Thanks for listening and hopefully we'll see you again next time.